Welcome to the Julia and Gino podcast, where business meets family. We explore what the entrepreneur life looks like from a family perspective. We are your hosts, Julia and Gino Barbaro. Hey everyone, this is Julia Barbaro, host of the Julia and Gino podcast. I'm here with the co-founder of Jake and Gino, my husband and co-host Gino Barbaro. Julia? Hey. How you doing? I am great. We've got some great guests today. Today's guests are Brielle and Jeremy Ryan Slate. Together, they founded Command Your Brand, a podcast public relations agency that harnesses the power of podcasting to help make them leaders in industries become legends. Since 2016, Command Your Brand's team has booked high-profile clients on over 2,000-plus top podcasts, and totally they are here with us today. And also, congratulations to the book, Unremarkable to Extraordinary. It just launched on Amazon. It's kicking butt. Guys, want to go check it out? We're going to discuss the book on the show today. Talk about your brand. Hopefully, put a little business into this because we're going to be talking relationships. But my wife will pull me back with the business, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Welcome to the show, guys. <laughs> hey, guys, we're excited to be here. Just met you recently. You quickly become two of our favorite people. Yes. So thanks for having us. <laughs> well, you know, I got so much to say about that comment, but I'll let. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you guys are so great. Yeah, we've a lot of similarities here. You know, husband, wife, business, family homeschool, yeah. et cetera. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a big topic. I mean, a lot of people are like, how do you work together? And if you want to go there first, we can, because I, I think we should. I'd rather go there <laughs> last. But since Jeremy said his wife is the boss, my wife is the boss also. So we'll let the bosses control. And Jeremy, me, you will hang out here. We'll have a good time. Yeah, it sounds good to me, man. <laughs> I'm used to it at this point. <laughs> so, I, you know, let's go there, really. I think, how did you guys start working together? Because I remember talking to Jeremy a couple of weeks ago, and he said to me, I don't know how I couldn't work with her. Mm. So most people have the opposite mm -hmm. paradigm. How did you guys start working together and, and how do you make it work? Do you remember? Yeah. So this is 2012 and we were at PNC Bank Art Center and we were seeing Brad Paisley. I, I said to you, oh man, imagine if we could work together. You're like, no, that would never work. <laughs> you remember that conversation? Well, it was a very, very different time. So like conceptually, I couldn't see that because mm -hmm. he was a teacher. So how do you even meld those together? Yeah. But yeah, we've been working together for, I would say, over 10 years now. Yeah. And it's it's been interesting because like, you know, as as I said, like, so my master's in history, mm -hmm. Brielle studied PR her entire life. She's done PR for, gosh, like 15 plus years now at this point. So we didn't see like how our paths would cross. It was more or less because like, you know, my life situation changed a lot. And Brielle had always been like a, a cheerleader for me because she comes from an entrepreneurial family. Like for me, like I come from a very blue collar family, like. You know, you stay at one company for 40 years, you work, work, work and, and make it happen. And I had a lot of life changes, started this podcast and she was very supportive. And, you know, because of that, that's where the company came from. Why did you guys start the podcast? Do you want the PR answer or the real yeah. answer? <laughs> um, so the, the, the real, the real answer is, you know, I had done all these different things that didn't really work out. You know, I'd done network marketing. I'd sold life insurance. I, we actually went to China and learned how to source products and private labeled on Amazon, but I kind of like bungled the the whole order process and lost everything overnight <laughs> to one address you can in maryland. laugh at it now isn't that funny yeah yep. one address in maryland that sniper got me so that uh, was kind of like the end of my business career and i've been listening to podcasts since gosh like 2009 or something like that and the podcast is called the no agenda show which was the podcast i listened to like to listen to and now it's the podcast we listen to together and I just started the show because i'm like all right i need something to do other than like just working at a friend's marketing firm you mentioned something, uh, Jeremy, you mentioned that your wife encouraged you and she's very encouraging in general. And yeah. I think that is really the secret of success in a couple, because when, you know, my husband had a lot of interesting ideas of, of career changes. And if we, you know, as a wife, we can bring you down, let's just be honest. And it's, and it's really important that a couple is encouraging to each other, even if you're taking a risk you know, you got to talk about it. But when we bring down our spouse, that's when you're going to fail in a lot of things. And I think mm -hmm. that's important that we forget about that. So I just applaud you, um, Brielle, for encouraging your husband. Question. You got a question? Yes. <laughs> I want to even go further. Yeah, question. I know you're going to. Because we do talk to a lot of couples about working together. And, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, you have to stay in your lane, you, you know, your roles, you know, each other's strengths and weaknesses. So how did you in the beginning compared to now, it's been 10 years. What did you learn from the beginning till now? <laughs> My viewpoint, I think the biggest thing for us is like, we're really good, big goal people. So like putting our eye on the prize together, how is that working, you know, uh, with us as a couple, how does that work with us 
as our family, our business. And like, we kind of grow it out from there. And that's like, for us, I think to make sure that we're really on the same page. And that's something we've always, always done. And you like to travel too. So like, you're always thinking of like, <laughs> mm-hmm. how can we get Jeremy speaking at this event in this strange location? Yes. Because I really want to go there. Or like, yes. you, you pitched yeah. me in Thailand a couple of years ago because you're like, I want to go to Thailand. And we're, um, we still have it sitting there. Um, yeah. As soon as they have the event again, we're, we're back yeah. in. 2020 yeah. was a wild year. I had an incredible speaking calendar book, none of which happened. But like a lot of that type of stuff is motivated by like, what can the family do together? Which is kind of cool too. Right. Yeah. So in your company, what roles do each one of you do? I mean, what are your strengths in, in, in the company? So Brielle's really, really good at building systems and establishing things. Like even a lot of the things I'm running now, she's built them. She's just really been good at that. So she functions really as the chief operating officer, whereas I'm like the person I like to do interviews. I do, you know, I'm talking to people all the time. So like I really fit in kind of the, the brand evangelist CEO type role from that. But I guess, how would you describe you know, yeah, roles. same. I mean, I think for me, like it's something I've had to do my whole life. I've always been an entrepreneurial family. So I've helped out a lot, you know, helping to establish things, you know, hiring. I've probably hired like, I don't know, thousands of people. I feel like at this yeah. point. So her mom's a chiropractor. So she's like, run, she's helped run her practice for yeah. like many, yeah. many, many years. Yeah. So it's just something that like, I've always had my hands in and I really enjoy that. I, I enjoy creating. So for me, that's a lot of fun. But And then also just with my background in PR, I've always kind of held the, the reins for that area of our company as well. Yeah. How you want things done. You've been very particular about like, I want them done this way and this is why, but I think that's also important because it makes sure that clients get handled in a certain way too. Mm-hmm. But let me ask you, people always say, oh, you have to stay in your own lane and it, it's great and all. My wife the other morning woke up and started talking about cash flow and about fulfillment and about what does it cost to, to bring on a student? And I was like, I was like, this is great. I mean, I'm gonna tell Jake, my partner, my partner, was like, dude, you are lucky because my wife never thought about money because like, you know, staying in your own lane. But I think personally, it's always a good thing to see what each one of us is doing and not not for her to come and dictate to me, this is what we should yeah. do. But hey, you got a pretty cool job. And I've never thought of, of your position that way. And how do you guys handle that? Because I'm sure you're both into each other's lanes, as we like to say. How do you stay into your own lane, but still help out on the other side? You know, so it's interesting because like, I, so I'm going to be honest, like I hate doing finances and stuff like that. And Brielle's always the one, like, we have to do this. This is the meeting time. This is when we're doing it. So like at the same time, I think you're really good at holding both of us accountable, which is something, you know, I kind of stink at where I'm like the creative, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to talk to this person. I want to, you know, write this thing or whatever. Whereas you kind of keep the reins in on things. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think like he likes to go to the shiny objects. He likes the fun stuff. (laughs) And like, I make sure the practical gets done, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but I think also like in regards to staying in your own lane for us, like because we both have our skill sets that we know that we have, we also ask dumb questions to each other, which is really helpful because yeah. that also helps us see our own blind spots. Mm-hmm. You know, like something I wouldn't think of he, because I'm in the area every day, he's able to be like, well, have you thought of blah? And mm-hmm. then I'm like, oh no, I never thought of it that way. Like I'm always so into my own you know, what I'm doing and same thing for him. And sometimes it's annoying. I'm sure oh, it's annoying sometimes, <laughs> definitely. but by the same token, like we can help point out each other's blind spots. Yeah. And, well, and gonna... I think also as well, like another thing about it and like you and I've been really good at like, I don't know how to describe this, but like talking things out where I, I think mm-hmm. a lot of people like kind of pay lip service to that. Mm-hmm. But for us, like, you know, we have our arguments here and there, like they do happen. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but we, it doesn't happen a lot because we're really good at kind of like, you know, I'm not happy with this. You're not happy with that. Let's kind of talk about it and figure it out. And sure. It's going to get heated, but it's never from the perspective of like to hurt the other person, if that makes sense. Yeah. What were the challenges early on starting to work together? So the listeners can get an idea of, Hey, I'm not the only one going through this, through this challenge with my spouse. And then honestly, what I want you to do is just follow that up by saying it's been the most amazing thing, really, because sometimes we need to hear that it's going to be a challenge. But if you stick with it, like everything else in life, if it's worth it, it's worth mm-hmm. the effort. Um, I'll, I'll just be I can't go too deep into this because there's legally only so much we can say. Um, but we had another when we started our company it had a different name. Um, and we had another business partner. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason that that company ended is because there were actually three partners in that company. You know, Brielle was one of the three partners. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that person wouldn't allow her to have any control over decision-making and and different things like that. Um, You know, and 
like, I don't want to sound rude, but there's some women that are homemakers. There's my wife is one of the smartest people I know business wise. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, we're not just giving her a job because it's a nice thing to do. We're doing it because she probably deserves my job, frankly. Mm -hmm. So like, it was kind of not a great situation for her to just be ignored. And that was one of the main reasons we, we actually ended up splitting off that partnership because, um, you know, I wanted to make sure she got her due. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly where my mind went too. Like how we started, it was supposed to be a third, a third, a third, and it ended up being not that (laughs) 50%, 25, 25. So that was probably the biggest fight we've ever had in our marriage was that one night when we were Mm -hmm. like actually deciding what the partnership rates were going to be. And yeah, that was, I think like probably the lowest of our marriage was that night, like forming that company. So like going into that wasn't a good start just, just Mm -hmm. to, yeah. So then when we decided to bring down the house <laughs> literally, and build it from scratch from there on in, like we knew, okay, well, this is how we want it done. And for us, it really has been us working together to create the dream that yeah. we want, not based off of what somebody else thinks it should be. Yeah. And I had to be willing to see that, frankly, I wasn't willing to see that in the beginning. And I think, you know, a lot of times you have to be willing to see someone else's viewpoint. You know, what's interesting though, the lowest part in your marriage, the lowest point in your marriage got to where you are now. And I think that's amazing when we look back at stuff like that, because when we're in the midst of it, we're like, what's going to happen? You know, where, where are we going to be? What's the company going to be? And because you can't see into the future, but sometimes when we look back, we're like, wow, that was the most difficult time in our lives, but it brought us to where we are, which is amazing. Cause I, we wouldn't, I'm sure my husband was ready to get into your company command your brand right Mm -hmm. well it's it's interesting though because you know like julia i look at like what we were doing now then and like then it felt like oh my god like this is like the be all end all like this Mm -hmm. is amazing and i look at it it now it's like we weren't doing a tenth then of what we're doing now it's just kind of wild like we had one employee kind of barely and like you know we have what like 16 now i think or so Mm -hmm. it's like it's just a very different thing and we had to Mm -hmm. kind of be willing to give that up to get we have now it's amazing. So what would, would you say when you're selecting a partner, we always talk about values based decision making, mm-hmm. would you would you really say if your values don't align with your potential business partner, or the potential venture, hey, it's time to just cut her off as soon as possible? That but I think I don't know about you, like, I feel like we're much more careful in going in those, right. like, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're like, frankly, we haven't had a real partnership since then, because we're yeah. kind of, I guess, in some ways gun shy, where it's kind of like, I don't mm-hmm. want to give someone that much control again. I don't right. know. How, how have you felt about that? Yeah, I mean, we almost did, but that was too similar. <laughs> yeah. But value based. Yes, I totally agree with that. For us, it's like, because at the end of the day, like, if you don't have your core beliefs in alignment, like, what are you doing together? You're going to be there. You're going to be fighting with each other. There's yeah. going to be some area deep in your soul that you're going to have a disagreement with them. And it's maybe not that person, but mm-hmm. you're going to put it on them. And those things build, right? Like it may be that one little thing. And then you pick up another little thing and another little thing and another little thing. And then before you realize that you had this giant snowball and you're like, where did this snowball come from? It started as a pebble. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. But sometimes too, we have to be in those bad partnerships to know what to look for again, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause that's, that also happened with my husband. He had a lot of bad a couple bad partnerships, but we need to go through those. And a lot of people are so cautious not to have that experience ever, but sometimes that's helpful, right? We didn't know like what questions to ask or anything like that. Like we didn't know, like, what do you consider? What do you look at? Like I was a teacher. I had no background other than like (laughs) talking to people for hours on a podcast. Like, so like we didn't have experience and I think, Mm -hmm. you know, it's made us a lot smarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of the biggest learning lessons I think that you can have and everyone on the call can have is as you become an adult, you can blame your partner or you can take ultimate responsibility because you said something that was eye opening to me right now. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what, Jeremy? That's on you, right? You can blame your partner. And I think as part of the growth, if you can accept that, I did the same thing. I lost $172,000 on my first real estate transaction back in 2005. Was that painful? Absolutely. Does my mom still bring it up at every chance she sees me? Absolutely. (laughs) But you know what? That's the reality. The reality is I had a sucky partner. He was terrible. Mm -hmm. He was incompetent. But did I get on a plane, fly down, look at the properties? Did I do my due diligence? Did I know what a syndication was? 
Absolutely not. So ultimately, I took responsibility. Mm -hmm. and It was great because it strengthened my resolve to get into the business, to learn better, to educate myself, to finally meet a partner that was good. Jake yep. that was in my alignment. Mm -hmm. And that all led to the success that I have now. So for everybody out there, number one, values-based decision making. And number two, be responsible. Don't be the victim because victims have no solutions. They only have more problems. Yep. So yep. go out there and look for the solution of what, what you're trying to do. And, you know, we've been talking about working with your, with your spouse. Maybe you would not have been able to work with your spouse at this juncture and you, you would have stayed in that, in that relationship and she would not have been working with you and you would not have been able to scale up. So now looking back at that, that's probably eye opening to you as well, isn't it? Yeah. Like what would it be like if we weren't working together? Like, I don't, I don't quite I, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we'd be able to laugh as much because that's I right. would be, you know what I mean? I would be so upset with him. Like, how did you do that? But no, it's, it's us. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing is too, like our litmus test for, you know, how bad is the situation? <laughs> do you want to just say what we do? Well, we often look at each other. If I go through something tough, I go, well, did we die? Well, no, we didn't <laughs> die. We're still living. So this is a good thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. We can only go up from here. It's good. Like, <laughs> and really, I think, you know, just being able to laugh about it and, you know, figure out, okay, you know, who did like game post game, figure out what happened and being able to do it with your spouse, yeah. I think in business is so helpful. Yeah. I, I think one of the most important things that the listeners should really take away from this, we haven't mentioned it, but it should be obvious. You guys are on the same team. Yep. yep. You're, you're not yep. against each other and there's no ego in, in marriage. Well, it's competition. Well, that, that's really right. interesting though, because like when we were going through that other situation, like I remember you saying like, Hey, I'm on your team. Like, you know, like I remember yeah. you saying that. And that's yeah. like, at that time I wasn't treating you like a teammate, you know? Yeah. But, but that's what it ultimately is. You're in a relationship. And, and I think when you're working together, I'm better at certain things than my wife. She's better than me at certain things. I have to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And I think if we're trying to hold our spouse back or we're trying to compete with our spouse, that's not the right thing to do. Even with a partnership, even with a mm. partner like Jake, yep. we're not competing. I'm trying to compliment him and he's trying to compliment me. But I think in a marriage and working together in that, that environment, it's really important to keep that, that eye on the prize. But you guys, you wrote the book on Remarkable to Extraordinary. Now, I have a little bit of a beef with the title. And let me tell you why. Uh, <laughs> because all I right, think, let us have it. Because <laughs> Gino, Gino was born extraordinary. I was just, he I was came just out of the womb say, amazing. Dude, I am far from that. I am probably, I'm not even extraordinary yet. I've got a long way to go. But the, the premise that I think people take away is, and this is for most people, they already think they're unremarkable. And I want everyone out there to listen to this. We're all remarkable. We're all here for a reason. God put us here for a reason. And I think I know what you're trying to get with, with the story, yeah, yeah. With, with the book itself, because it's a journey. We're all on life's journey. We all don't know what we want to do. Then all of a sudden we figure it out. We start creating impact. We start helping others. We start going to our, I guess, our sole purpose. And that's what leads us to being extraordinary. But I want everyone to you know, they know out there, we're all remarkable when we're born. And we just have to figure things out a little bit. So why, why did you write the book? What was the inspiration for writing the book? Well, I want to bat back on the title a little bit. Thank like, you. I was wondering. Well, they, 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 to cover they, so, it up there. so it's a slightly different viewpoint I'm coming from. It on, you know, like, like know. the thing, the, the thing, you know, like, I get where you're coming from. Like, you know, God all made us special and unique in our own ways. And I think that's important. But the, the perspective I'm coming from is we all kind of are playing with the same deck of 52 cards. You know, mm -hmm. maybe somebody has a little bit of a glossier deck. Maybe somebody's mm -hmm. deck isn't as nice. But like in this case, like it's the things you do and, and what you, and how you react to things and how you handle things that actually help you to become extraordinary. So that's that's, that's the perspective right. it came yeah. from. And frankly, I've been talking about writing a book for like how long? And you pushed me to do it, actually. So a long time. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brielle is kind of like, are you going to do it this time? Or aren't you going to do it this time? You know, let's just spend the money and do it. Yeah. I, I, let's just go there before we get into the company. I want to because that is a big deal. What you just said, you've been wanting to do something for a really long time. So what was it that your wife said to you that finally made you take the step to actually complete it. Frankly, so Brielle's uh she's a tight wad. She doesn't spend money. She's uh -huh. very stingy. Yeah. And the fact that you were willing to like spend on it was I was like, okay, she really does believe in this. <laughs> but the okay. other part too, like if we're gonna get a little bit personal, like yeah. you know, we have two girls right now. So like the timing of it, it's like literally I'd have to like take the girls away for like, mm -hmm. you know, a day at a time or something yeah, right. so that he could sit down, focus and write it. That I think that was really a big thing too. And like yeah. we had prior to 2020, we had such a heavy travel schedule. It was just like, how, where is the time to do this? Yeah. So, and you were so helpful in that process too. Cause like it was, there were so many times that I stopped, like my dad got COVID, he got really, really sick. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had to take care of him. So I stopped writing then, you know, daughter number two was born. I stopped mm -hmm. writing then. 
like there was all these reasons to stop and you're always like all right cool so it's saturday i'm going away all day with the girls and you're gonna write today Mm -hmm. so like that was actually that support was really important and like pushing him like the lawn can wait yes (laughs) like i'm maniacal about i'm maniacal about (laughs) mowing my lawn i'm sorry so she didn't let you have any distractions voluntary distractions because sometimes we find other things to do because something's a little difficult and we're trying, and then you have your wife saying, nope, today you're free. I love it. I mow my lawn in a Yankee stadium thatch pattern. <laughs> I am that maniacal anyway. That's awesome. I'm sensing another mm-hmm. connection between Jeremy, Brielle, Julia, and Gino. Brielle mm-hmm. has an idea. <laughs> Jeremy, I was thinking more work. <laughs> and then Brielle says, Jeremy, you're working um, too hard. Yeah. We're sitting in bed last night, actually. And she's quiet. And I said, what are you thinking about? And she turns over to me and she goes, well, you know, I'm thinking about possibly writing another book. We're thinking about doing the Personal Finance Academy. And how was it? I'm like, it's 1030 at night. Should we really be talking about this right now? So well, I, I sighed. What, what happened was I it. sighed and he's like, what do you think? And I said, nothing. We'll talk about it another time. He's like, no, really. And I and he's like, is it another idea? And this I said, death. I don't. I said, let's just wait. He's like, no, tell me. So I just you have to put that out there. <laughs> okay. I'm glad so I'm not asked. the only one. Okay. Like, we, we've been like. <laughs> trying to fall asleep at night talking about like <laughs> ideas and stuff like yeah. that and then that's yeah. usually like the thing that we come back to too is we're like if couples aren't in business together like I might be annoyed mm-hmm. that he can't sleep right now because yes. he's so excited and right. you know like in, and same thing like we both get on these like you know these kicks and yeah yeah no. that's why I love multifamily for us for the Jake and Gino brand is because spouses partners they can they can still have their w2 job but they can do the multifamily business together and yep. if they ultimately end up want to scale up and buy properties they can do that as well because women have certain skill sets mm-hmm. men have certain skill sets you know maybe men like to underwrite women are better at negotiating or are, are possibly going out and networking whatever that looks like there's so many different things to do in multifamily and it's a great way for spouses to work together and obviously it's their investing they're trying to secure their financial future and it's a great way to, to network. But I want to go back because I, I always have to remind because I don't do real estate. I don't know anything about it, but there's other parts that's of your company. Statement. Yes. There's other parts. And, and I think that's important as a spouse is that sometimes in part of our lives, my my first what 20 years of marriage, 20 maybe 23 years, I didn't do anything when it came to the, the company, but I did support him and I did mm. help him with what he needed, what I could do at the time. If I had a baby, I would help him with the computer. And so it's important to know is that as the mom, as the wife, as the woman, I had to figure out what I could do at the moment and help him in that way. If he just needed support, that's all I could give. That's what mm. I would give. And I think that's important because a lot of us were like, well, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in, in what my husband's doing. <laughs> you know, I, that's a really, really good point too. Yeah. Cause like I say to Brielle, like, wow, I'm a much better investment now than when you met me. Like, <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? Like, yes. like I look at I it. I saw it. I saw the saw vision. It. No, but like, like you knew I the mean, potential, right? But like, I, I mean like the first probably year or two years of our marriage, like Brielle paid all the bills Why I was mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to do all this stuff, mm-hmm. like start this podcast, do all right. these things. And I feel like in, in some marriages, somebody been like, you know, why aren't you pulling your weight? Why aren't you doing this? Yes. You know, she's paying for everything. And she's like, you know, keep going, honey. Like you can yeah. get this like, hey, hey, Grant Cardone's over here. Come meet him. Like she's like been really like helpful in that way. That's awesome. And the irony of ironies, my wife was doing the computer for me about six, seven years ago, posting on LinkedIn, Facebook. And then she stopped. And her way of me doing something is you need to do it yourself. You need to do it uh, so I ended up doing it. And then a couple of years ago, she comes to me, the tech moron, and asks me about Facebook and Instagram. I'm like, hold on a second. This is so delicious. Let me just I was sit just here getting your attention. for a minute or I just, two. I just wanted yeah, your you attention. Say, you just yeah. can't say, hey, I forgot how to do this. How do you do it? So it comes full circle. Um, I want I want to talk about the company of you know, Command Your Brand. What do you guys mm-hmm. do with Command Your Brand? And obviously, my next question is, how do people go out there and create that amazing brand? We've always described ourselves as like, you know, the PR firm for the podcast space, but that's, so we've, so another thing we're working on right now is we're doing like a reposition of the brand. Um, another thing that came up where I'm, I'm doing a nine week branding course and Brielle's like, you got to do that. And I'm like, yes, in the midst of everything, we don't have time to do. I'm going to do it. Um, so like, we've also been looking at like how we serve. And the, the big thing that we're looking at is we are primarily storytellers. So we're trying to, to, to reposition ourselves as we help CEOs to, to, in a, to tell the biggest and most important story to the people that need to hear it, right? Like you see so many times, like, you know, if you're featured in an article, well, a writer still had a way to, to you know, position what you said in a different way. 
Or if you're on TV, it's a five minute snippet. You don't get to tell the whole story. We're trying to help CEOs and founders to speak directly to the people that need to hear what they have to say. And I think podcasting is kind of the best place to do that. And that's when, when you look at it, right? Like some of the biggest things we've experienced through voice, um, you know, uh, whether it's FDR's fireside chats or, you know, uh, uh, you know, the bombing of London on the radio and things like that mm -hmm. being, being talked about by Churchill. Like these things were delivered in audio and they were long form and they were delivered directly to the people. And, you know, yes, we help pe place people on podcasts, but it's more about getting the story directly to the people that need to hear it in the best way that possible. The CEO's vision and their voice. Their That's vision and their voice, not letting okay. it be bastardized. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. do, do you guys mind if I share a quick story that we had with Frank Gallinelli? We had him on the Jake and Gino podcast. Yeah. And, and I was struggling with something to say about what does Jake and Gino do? We create, we teach people how to invest in multifamily. And he said, every company who's super successful, uh, my partner, Rick Sapio calls it a catalyzing statement. Domino says, get it there in under 30 minutes. What he said, basically, Frank Ellenelli, every company, whether it's Apple, whether it's Google, they rip it down into one sentence. And it took me a little while to figure out what Jake and Gino's was. But I said to myself, what are we actually ultimately doing? And for me, at Jake and Gino, we create multifamily entrepreneurs. People can understand that. It resonates with them. It's a one sentence line. It's a punch right between the eyes. Yeah. They know what we do right now. And it was, it was a, a lot of work, a lot of effort. And that's the brand that we're trying to admit. The other thing about branding is if there's one word that I want people to take away from Jake and Gino, the one word is family. That, that's yeah. what mm -hmm. I think people have to figure out. That one catalyzing statement, what's going to, what do you, what, how are you going to stand out amongst the other educators in the space? And what do you want the feel of your brand to be? So and with your company, what is the feel that you want to emit when people here command your brand? We're helping CEOs and founders to define the future. That's what we really, that's what we really do, right? When you look at it, um, whether a CEO or a founder is involved in the day-to-day, -day, like it's their vision, it's their perspective, it's their thoughts, it's their, how they position themselves that does that. So we're really helping CEOs and founders to define the mm -hmm. future. Yeah. That's I awesome. think it's in your title though, command your brand. I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> go, I think it's go, right go there. So, but I, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to give credit where it's due on that one. So, <laughs> um, so Brielle's mom has had a very, very successful, actually one of the most successful in New Jersey, uh, uh, chiropractic and wellness practices for what, like 30 mm. plus years now at this point in time. So she's actually one of our biggest advisors for command your brand. And actually the name was her. She came up with the name. Yeah. It's I, I'm telling you the, the name of the company is huge. It's a big deal, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you're out there, what do you tell people who are thinking about getting on a podcast? I mean, a couple of tips. I mean, obviously other than get soliciting and, and signing up with you because the process can be very daunting, yeah. especially if you're starting early on, but if somebody who's out there, who's got a podcast, do you have any tips for people who have a podcast right now? I'm going to let you take that one because you've built this process and you're kind of maniacal about it. No, I mean, I think I'm just going to go really simple. I mean, yeah. do it, just right. get started. A lot of people are afraid to get started because they, they are afraid they're going to sound a certain way or they're not going to mm -hmm. say the right things. And it's just like, you got to hash it out. Like just get on the mic, start talking. Um, and it'll be what it'll be. But then, you know, but after you do it a few times, mm -hmm it really starts to kick in and you get your messaging down. And that's what a lot of our clients end up getting out of the program is like, we really honed in our message. Yeah. So I think just go for it. Yeah. Clarity of message, I think is really, really important. And I think as well, when you're approaching, I think too often people try to make it about like what their pitch is mm -hmm. when you make it about what your purpose is and how it can serve the audience. I think that's really, really vital. Um, because like, you know, you guys know as much as, as much as I do hosting my own show, like, when somebody comes on and their main thing is about like, I want to sell this thing. I don't really want to talk to that person because mm -hmm. it's about like wanting to help the people listening to me. Well, I think it's great though. Cause a lot of people out there have great ideas. They have great companies and they can't get their message out. And so that's what your company is. It's getting people's message out that they don't have an audience yet, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And so going to you and I've, you know, I personally know how the program works it's super amazing because it's super easy step by step. There's no like, what do I do next? It's you. You have everything in line on. On it's very organized. Everything sent to you, and, and you know this. That's where Brielle's maniacal process building comes in. Yes, because that's one of the problems with a lot of companies. It's like confusing. Yeah, so yeah. Like I've worked with companies before. I'm like, kind of like, what is my next step? And like, yes. and where am I? Yeah. Right. So Brielle's built this system in Google Sheets um, for our employees where. How many steps are on that sheet? Like a hundred and something? Yeah. 
and um, everybody tags each other using comments and Google Sheets mm -hmm. of like, was this done? Okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? So it's like, because we never want a client to feel like they don't know where they're at in the process. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and people have tried to get us to use mm -hmm. Slack and all these other programs just, and we're like, It doesn't really? work for us. Yeah. <laughs> we like checklists. We're big yeah. checklists. Yeah, people. no, I yeah. agree with you. I'm with you. What I'd say about building a business and building a brand, I, I had the revelation about six months ago, I don't know why it took me so long that when I was in the restaurant, I had the one solopreneur, that one small restaurant. My thought process was I was, I had the business to support my family. And mm -hmm. I think if you're a business owner and you have that idea, that mantra, you're number one, never going to grow. And number two, you're living in scarcity mindset because you're thinking about what you can get instead of what your business is providing value for others. Now, the restaurant was really providing amazing value. People are coming home, we're, they're doing barbecues, they're doing catering, but I didn't think from that perspective. And I think what you guys are doing also, you're, you're giving voice to people out there. And what you said, Jeremy, don't go on a podcast just to pitch. You can sell yeah. it 90 degrees. You can go on and we talked about your book. But you're not going to sell anything if you go on just to pitch. You're not. Right. And then you're going to yes. blame me when you don't. Yes. yes. And, and, but that's the thing. I think people have the wrong mindset. They're thinking about the, the building a brand and building a vision is just to sell your product. Mm -hmm. That's not what business is for. Mm -hmm. Business is for to provide value. So for anyone yeah. wanting to start a podcast, what is your messaging? Why are you starting a podcast? How yeah. are you going to give value to the person listening to that show? Is it going to be entertaining? Because at any second, I can break out into opera and make people <laughs> laugh and make my wife nervous. She'll start sweating. That's great. That's what I love about the podcast. We can make it entertaining. We can make it enjoyable. We can throw in some, some wisdom into it. We can connect. We can make mm -hmm. people feel great. What do you want your podcast to do? How are you going to stand out? And how are you going to provide value? I think that's what people really need to think about about the podcast. And then the second step is you don't know the systems. You don't know how to do a Calendly link. You don't have yep. a one pager. You don't know how to create that messaging. You don't know what kind of questions to ask. That's where Jeremy and yes. Brielle can step in and help you out with that whole process. Because mm -hmm. I think everyone who wants to be a thought leader nowadays, and it's funny because thought leader doesn't even rank high in Google. It's experts. And I hate the word yeah. expert because it makes me yeah. skin crawl. But there's so many times self-described, right? Like yes. nobody yeah. like named you that. Yes, <laughs> you're right. But unfortunately, that's what Google picks up. And that's what people yeah. want to hear. That's what trends high. So for you to be an expert, get out there. Be uncomfortable. I mean, if you go back to Jake and Gino's couple first podcasts, it was Jake calls in the dark days, but those dark days lead to the light because we didn't know what we were doing. We just went out there and started it. So, so do you remember me um, in our old house in the kitchen recording those podcasts on my iBook? Like how bad that was? Yeah. So he actually had a different podcast that started out with, and then we just had to like, just scrap burn it down. the whole thing. <laughs> that's kind of a theme. If it doesn't work out, burn it down and redo. <laughs> but that's it. You started. And I think that's yeah. really the biggest step is start. You know, yeah. even if you have to have a video camera in front of you, record yourself, listen to it over and over again. It's painful as anything, right? To hear your voice. Mm -hmm. But that's how you learn to get better. It's like the, the whole concept of done is better than perfect. And that's yes. why. So this, so this is a, another thing with us. Like, I write things really fast and I write what needs to be said, but there's so many misspellings and so many yes. grammar problems and everything else. Brielle reads it and says, yeah, change these 50 things and then we're good to go. Yeah. But like, that's also another way that like we complement for each other exactly. well too. Yeah. 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 He's so good at like churning out things. And like his eye is like always on the prize. Like he can get a project done just looking at like last week. Yeah. Like we, accomplish the unimaginable last week. Like he literally, we just redid an office and he had it done. What should in have been one day, month? in one day, I, <laughs> I sanded all the drywall, uh, all the drywall, uh, compound primed it with two coats, painted it with two coats, ceiling trim and walls. And the next day I got the floor in. That's yeah. Awesome. So like our team that was helping us is like, oh yeah, we're not going to get the floors in for like three weeks, given like what has to get done. And Jeremy's like, nope. Four, <laughs> four o'clock. It'll be, it'll be done. <laughs> He's like, come, come back on Sunday. It's, it's happening. So like <laughs> literally they were doing that, but like, so he's just so good at just powering through and then, but there's usually mistakes, which he fixes. Yes. Yes. Jeremy, you're killing me because I am not doing that. Now my wife's got the idea that Gino's got to go start doing some floors and sanding. No, that. see, that's well, so where, I, that's where we come well, in. So we, we, got a, we have an au pair that's moving in. Um, you know, I don't know when people are hearing this, but this au pair that's moving in next week. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the, the, like, we've always worked from home. That's what we've mm -hmm. done. But my current office space is going to become her bedroom, which means mm -hmm. I don't have an office. So we actually took um, our garage is like, other than like keeping things in it, like totally unused. So we actually took it and turned it into a really, really cool office space. Like it's mm -hmm. got, you know, the, the electrician came in and rewired everything. We got all the, all the heating ducts in, all the air conditioning stuff in, um, and all that kind of stuff to like really make that like a usable space. So it, it's been pretty cool. 
That's okay. awesome. Last yeah. question for me on, on branding. I mean, yeah. for people out there, you're going through the branding process, starting the podcast, starting to be a thought leader. Do you have any other ideas or thoughts on how people can really focus on building their own personal brand? So the one thing that we're looking for is how are you helping the world and bettering mankind? So like, that's kind of where we want to start with and like, see, okay, so what, and why do we say that? It's because what value are you bringing to society? What value are you bringing to others? Like if it's just, we've mentioned this a few times, everybody on the podcast about, you know, how are you going to get paid or, you know, your family that's not going to grow the brand. Like we want to see what is your vision? What is your purpose? So that's, it's got to help yeah. others survive better, right? If it's just helping you survive better, you know, number right. one, you're short-sighted, but number two, like other people can't buy into that, right? It's mm-hmm. got to be something other people can buy into. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. No, I love that. And I just want to encourage anyone out there. There's a lot of you out there that do, they have, they have a company, they have ideas, contact Jeremy and Brielle, because the process that we've gone through with, with you all has been amazing so far. And I just want to thank you for that. But my husband has some wrap up. Wrap up. So does. the PR firm for the podcast space, and we help CEOs get their message out. And Jeremy's story of, of unremarkable to extraordinary. Uh, I love the title of the book. I was just playing a little bit. But- <laughs> <laughs> well, give him the byline. Give him the byline. So the by- well, so it so it, and the original title too was was uh, underdog to extraordinary, which I turned out hating the more I did it. Mm. So it was ignite your passion to go from passive observer to creator of your own love life, it. right? So many people watch life go by. and I love it. it. And that's available on Amazon. Is that right? Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Nice. Uh, we're also in everywhere. bookstores too. So oh, they can get everywhere. Awesome. Excellent. Any final words, guys? To get yeah. To it was- meet both of you. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, it was great to hang out with you guys. Yeah. Um, we don't get to do a lot of interviews together. I think we want to start doing, you know, doing more of mm-hmm. that. Um, and I just appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. And one final word for me, you guys should do podcasts together because we're promoting family. We're promoting working together as spouses. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea. Maybe Uh-oh. a little bit more work. Starter. All right. <laughs> uh, spin off another podcast, yeah. the Jeremy and Brielle show. And start you know in- what happens? I think it, and this is interesting, Jeremy, because a lot of, a lot of the guests that we have are just, you know, they're, they're men. If it's just mm-hmm. men, sometimes I'll ask to bring their wives on and you see the softer side of the guys. Mm. So even with Gino and Jake, obviously it's a little different and I'm sure your own is a little different. So to bring in the wives, it's, you know, you see a little laughter that so maybe I see you in the it. future, the Jeremy <laughs> and Brielle show. Yes. Just it out. <laughs> Bri- or Brielle's the host. And I just, <laughs> Hey, I'm the host on this one. I have to do the, uh, That's the- right. <laughs> thanks a lot guys. Um, command your brand. This stuff. Well, where, the show where can they get it in touch? Yeah. Uh, where, where can every yeah, the where- listeners get in touch with you? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to make sure I do what Brielle trains our clients on. So if you're looking to <laughs> really make an impact on podcasts, uh, we put together a really great resource for your audience because, you know, hey, I've been there. I know how hard it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they go over to crushitonpodcast.com, um, there is an awesome white paper over there on everything they need to know uh, about really getting their PR basics in. Also, you mentioned the book. Um, just want to give a shout for that. That's over at getextraordinarybook.com. Um, and if they head over there, we have a... Uh, really great audio program they'll get for free with their purchase called 30 days of extraordinary as well. So let's get extraordinarybook.com. Awesome. Thanks guys. Uh, I got to go and put some flooring in the house. right now. <laughs> hey, good luck, man. Bit, little bit Just make sure you tap stuff. the hammer sideways. You're going to break the boards, man. <laughs> I'll see you next week. I got a whole week's project, but um, thank, thanks. I, I appreciate it. This is great. Yeah, another awesome. so super and, fun. And for everybody out there that wants to create their brand and get a little uncomfortable because that's yes. what the process is all about. It's okay. You're going to look bad in the beginning, but with sticking oh, in true. there, and well, well, sticking in there and, and getting the right tutelage and getting the right mentorship on how exactly. to create the brand, you're going to dramatically shorten your learning curve. Absolutely. So guys, I want to thank you for being on and have a great day. Hey, thanks thank for having you so us. much, guys. Thank you. family this is where you need to be the team you've built is incredible there is no egos here everyone is always looking to help the other person